Hi, Andy Summers at Trade Skills for You, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a two gang socket known as a double socket onto a two gang Pactris box. So let's have a look what's inside the pack. So here's our socket and here's our terminal screws and we've got two little white caps here that we'll be putting in here to make it look nice when we've finished. The tools I'm going to need for this job are my wire cutters, or known as side cutters, and a terminal screwdriver. Always make sure that your terminal screwdriver is the right size for the terminal screws. If it's too small, then you can end up damaging the screws. So always make sure that your screwdriver is the right size for the terminal screw. I'm going to be using side cutters for stripping the insulation off the conductors for this video. And remember that if you're working on a, a socket that is part of a circuit, that circuit must be safely isolated from the supply. When you fasten the patrice to the wall, make sure that you don't over tighten these screws because if you do, you'll crack the box and we don't want that. And always make sure that you've got enough cable coming through to terminate the conductors. If it's too short, we might not get the conductors in the terminals. And if it's too long, we may have trouble fastening the socket on. A good way of making sure that the cable is the right length is to make sure that it reaches the corner of the back box the Pactris, and then add a thumb's width, let's say, and give it a snip there. That way you'll know that you've got enough to go around. Same on the other side, about a thumb's width, and we'll cut that off. Now we have to remove this outer sheath, but we don't want to remove it. Um, we don't want to take too much off, but we don't want to take too little off. So uh, we want to take it off to a few millimeters inside the box there. We don't want any conductors showing outside of the box, so we must make sure that the outer sheath comes into the box, but not by too much. This flat profile cable, commonly referred to as twin and earth, we can strip the outer sheath in several ways. And uh, many electricians will just cut down the middle and grab the circuit protective conductor or the CPC and use it to strip the outer sheath back. Now the problem is in a training center such as ours, sometimes the student may pull the CPC right out of the cable. So for this video, I'm just gonna show you an, an alternative way. So still snip down the middle, but now if we just grab the live conductors, that's the brown and the blue, uh, and just pull apart, and there we go, we can strip the cable like so. So using that technique uh, with these, let's just cut down the middle and then grab the line and the neutral conductors. Oops, let's just try that again. Let's cut a bit more there. There we go. And there we go. Can be a bit tough, just need a bit of pressure. And there we go, I've stripped the sheath back. Now I could, um, let's just put, I could use an electrician's knife to score around the sheath here to get a nice clean break, but it's not that essential really. I could just use my side cutters. So you just pull the sheath back and then with the side cutters, just careful, snip off the, the, the outer sheath, making sure that we don't damage the conductors like so. So that's that one done. I'll do the other one. Again, just remove the sheath and then carefully cut it back, leaving a few millimeters inside the box so that the conductors are inside the box and not showing outside. If it's a bit messy, you can trim it up, make it look a little bit nicer if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. The important thing is that the all of the cable is inside the box and there are no conductors visible outside. So I've removed the, uh, the outer sheath and I'm ready to strip the cables. And I'm using side cutters, but there are many tools available uh, for this and we'll show those in some other videos. Now, how much to cut off? Well, we want to make sure that we've got enough copper that's going to go in the terminal and make a good contact. If we cut it too short, we could end up tightening down onto the insulation and that'll cause a really bad connection. 
So again, it's, it's experience really that, that uh, will get you to this point, but a thumb's width like so is a good rule of, th <laughs> rule of thumb. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> carefully just snip around there with the cutters and there we go. We've removed the insulation, just working along all of them until we've got the right amount. Exposed. And now I'm ready to get these lined up and cut exactly to the right length, ready to go onto the socket. Now I've arranged the conductors like so, ready to go into the terminals on the socket. So if you show you the back of the socket here, uh, we've got two earth terminals where our CPCs will terminate. Uh, we've got a terminal marked L, that's L for line, that's the brown conductor, and the terminal marked N for the neutral, they're the blue conductors. Uh, but it's important at this point that the CPCs, circuit protective conductors, need to be identified. So I'm going to have to cover them with this green and yellow sleeving. Now, students have asked me before, why can't we just twist the CPCs together and put one piece of sleeving on? Well, the problem with that is if you twist them together, then you've got a good connection of the CPCs, but in the event of a fault, if these came out of the terminal, you might not pick the fault up immediately because they'd been twisted together. So the golden rule is you never twist conductors together. You always keep them separate. So I'm gonna slide a piece of green and yellow sleeving on. I'm taking it all the way back to uh, the outer sheath there. And I'm just gonna find by bending it back there, I can feel the end and I'm just gonna snip a piece off. I'll just pull it back a bit so I can see where I've marked it, snip it off there, slide on there, and there we go. I'll do the same with the other one now. So we'll slide the green and yellow down, just feel for the end, and there it is. So just come back about a thumb's width again and just score round, snip, and now we're ready for putting the socket front on. Um, so here we go, let's terminate these in here. So I'm putting the neutrals into the terminal marked with the letter N. I'm pushing them in. I can feel them there making good contact. You can't see it, but I can. That There's a just enough, a little bit of copper there that I can see that I'm fastening onto the copper and not the insulation. Now, I give that a nice tight turn there. Maybe good for those of you that are perhaps just starting out to get yourself a torque screwdriver because uh, that will let you know when you've tightened it up enough. I'm now putting the line conductors into the line terminal, uh, keeping that nice and tight there while I tighten the screw. Remember, the screwdriver needs to fit the screw head, otherwise as you put in a lot of pressure on like that, if the screwdriver is too small, it can damage the head of the screw. Uh, I've got two terminals where I could terminate the CPCs. For this example, I'm putting them both into the one terminal, which is fine. Uh, it's to do with computers and things. This is a topic for another video, uh, but you can put them both in the same one, that's fine. Or if you wanted to double the ends over on each one, you could use both of the terminals. Uh, but this, for this example, some sockets don't give you the option. Some have two, some only have one. So nice and tight. Always when you're doing a screw connection, pull back on the conductors to make sure they're not gonna come out, that they're nice and tight. And all that remains now, everybody, is to fasten that back on. So a little bit of curl on the conductors there. If I've cut this to the right size, that should push on there nice and easy. Not too much pressure from the conductors, so I know that's okay. I'll just get my terminal screws to finish the job. Again, make sure you've got the right size screwdriver. This one is perfect for these screws. 
Again, make sure that you don't over tighten these because if you do, you could crack the socket. So as soon as you feel the tension there, just give it a little turn and make sure that you don't over tighten it, but that it's not loose. You may want to put these little caps in to make it look nice. You don't have to, but that's what they're for. Makes that a nice job, doesn't it? There we go. Remember, this will need testing before it's energized to make sure that everything is okay. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please like and subscribe and tune in again. Thank you.